There's yes. this huge, massive world that can fall under that umbrella of coaching. And mm -hmm. then we therapists are literally the best possible people <laughs> right. to be leading this world. Like we have our entire ethical code. We have our massive education behind us. We have this unbelievable amount of training behind us. Yes. We have all these things. Like we are the people who should be at the forefront, who should be spearheading the yes. world of online education and the world of coaching and consulting. And so often we don't because of whatever narrative we have in our heads. Welcome to the Colleague Down the Hall podcast. This episode is sponsored by the Collab Oasis Clinical Consultation Groups. Hi, I'm Janine Wolf, and I'm your colleague down the hall. I have a passion for helping fellow therapists get the clinical and collegial support we all need to do this work. And wow, it just keeps getting harder every day. I'm the founder and facilitator of the Collab Oasis Clinical Consultation Groups. I have been a social worker for almost 30 years, and I own a successful solo online private practice. More of us than ever are practicing in solo or online practices, and we all need colleagues to process cases with, commiserate with on those really hard days, and also to celebrate our successes with. In this podcast, I'll bring you insights about trends and changes in our field and sit down with amazing therapists who are doing amazing work. We'll discuss fictionalized cases, way to practice sustainably, and of course, there will be plenty of laughing. I love laughing with friends. I'm so glad to have you as one of my colleagues down the hall. Hello, everyone. You are listening to another episode of the Colleague Down the Hall podcast. I'm your host, Janine Wolf, joined today by Katie Reed. Hello. Katie is a therapist. <laughs> Katie is a <laughs> therapist turned coach who's been helping other therapists outgrow the typical office since she did it herself in 2018. She runs the highly respected Clinic Coach Academy program, offering the only coaching certification plus business incubator exclusively for mental health professions. Today, we're going to talk about outgrowing the office and all the ways therapists are doing this. So welcome, Katie. Hello. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, nice to be here, too. Katie and I met another one of my guests that I met in Costa Rica. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of fun. Got to know a lot of people there. So I'm so excited to have you here with me today. So we're hearing more and more about therapists looking for ways to have more control over their income, their schedule, move away from the burnout that's so prevalent in our field. They're yeah. looking for ways to use their therapy skills to achieve this. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I am always amazed. And I, you know, this was me too for so long. I didn't understand that actually the skills I had as a therapist were a completely unique skill set. I think a lot of times we don't believe in just how much we know and just how much we have to offer. And we kind of go into this thing where we assume lay people, the average person who's gotten their, you know, psychology education on TikTok somehow knows just as much as we do. <laughs> Therapists right. tend to be way too humble, way yes. too uh, yes, quiet yes, about yes. what they know and what they do. And so because of that, it's very easy for us to accept being the lowest paid of the highly educated professions. Yes. And it's very easy for us to kind of limp along accepting the challenges of insurance or agency work or even the challenges of a private practice, even if it is private pay, because you still have such variable income and such a very uh, draining job and a private job and a job that can take a real toll on you physically, yes. mentally, emotionally, spiritually, even it really can take a toll. And often you're suffering in a degree of silence because of the privacy of the job. So there are just so many parts to it that are a challenge. And for me, what happened for us was our family went through a major transition. Both of my boys were diagnosed with special needs. My life changed a lot. I had to be able to do a whole bunch of services with them all day. And then we were moved with my husband's company across state lines to another state. And suddenly my license was moot. And I was back at the beginning after you know mm -hmm. years of directing community mental health programs and creating therapist training materials and all these things. It was like, it didn't matter. I couldn't make a living. Right. overnight once we moved. And so yeah. all of that was a huge challenge for us. And it forced my hand. It certainly forced me to think, okay, I'm going to get relicensed. But in the meantime, which mm -hmm. took a long time, like in the meantime, what am I going to do to make money to support our family? And it forced me to get creative and the direction to make a long story short, the direction I ended up going was into coaching and realizing, starting to meet coaches, 
starting to see the world. And when I say coaching, I mean, possibly life coaching could also be business coaching could also be consulting with companies could also be leading retreats could also be creating online courses. Yes. There's this huge, massive world that can fall under that umbrella of coaching. And mm -hmm. then we therapists are literally the best possible people <laughs> right. to be leading this world. Like we have our entire ethical code. We have our massive education behind us. We have this unbelievable amount of training behind us. Yes. We have all these things. Like we are the people who should be at the forefront, who should be spearheading the yes. world of online education and the world of coaching and consulting. And so often we don't. Because of whatever narrative we have in our heads, either that coaching is somehow bad or that we should just put up with all the difficulties of being a therapist and we should just be grateful for the job. And like, I, you right. know, I love being a therapist. Like there are so many elements of it that I know all of us are so grateful for. Mm -hmm. It's the greatest job in the world and mm -hmm. it has its challenges. And it so does. for a lot of us, it just does. And, you know, we hit this certain point in life where you look around and you're like, okay, there are things I like and there are things I don't. And I wonder if I could take the skills I already have right. and improve on some of those things I don't. Yeah. And that's what our clients in the Clinic Coach Academy are all therapists. And they're doing exactly that. They're figuring out how do I take what I love and take what I'm good at and just apply it, send it out mm -hmm. into the world in a slightly different form so mm -hmm. that it can be more and more people can benefit. And that that person, that therapist slash coach can also benefit and can also change their own life in doing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the first point that came to mind as you were talking is I live in a huge military community in Virginia Beach. And so I've seen military spouses over and over go from one state to another where they lost their career, yes. just like you. And it's devastating. Yes. You still have this amazing skill set. You still have all of your experience, but you're in a state that says like, we don't know you, you're going to have to maybe take more classes. You might have to do new certifications. So all of that is time consuming and scary. Yeah. And then on top of that, in graduate school, we're sort of marinated in the idea that we have to just be pleased to have a job. We have to show up and do whatever we're told to do. We have to work in ways that are not good for us as people. And right. so all of those things result in therapists looking for <laughs> other avenues. Like I can't right. sustain this any longer. And I'm all about right. sustainability. We have to work right. in a way that sustains us. And so what you're teaching is a great option. Thank you. Yes, I love it. It's been incredible to see people's growth. Once they start to look at it and go, you know what, I'm ready. I'm ready for more in my life. I'm ready to take on this new challenge. And for me and for a lot of our clients, what we see happen, do you remember like when you were in grad school, how exciting it was every single day because you were like learning these new things and you got yes. to like run out to the coffee shop with all your grad school colleagues and you'd be like talking all day and all night like yes. I loved that I loved the excitement I, I, mean, love I loved even running home to read my freaking textbooks because I was so excited no. about all the stuff that we were learning you know but I loved it and it's so funny then you go through years and years and years in the profession and you're not necessarily feeling that same excitement like you you kind of know the drill now you know the job you've yeah. been in it and starting to develop more of an online program and develop that coaching business and learn all the things that are available to us now to be able to make this easier and all the different ways that we can take our knowledge and get it out to more people that is that same level of excitement. And we have people in our group all the time who are like, oh my gosh, I stayed up all night because I was so excited because I was working on this new coaching offer and I'm so excited to get it out into the world. And I'm yes. like, I, yes, I get it. Like I get that excitement and it's fun again. And so just knowing I've got all the skills, I've got all the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now it's just a matter of learning. Okay, how do I actually put it out online so that I move beyond my little local area? And yeah. how do I really succinctly talk about what I can do to help someone, which we're not necessarily, people know what therapy is. We don't have to explain to them how we can help them. They just have an assumption about what therapy is. When mm -hmm. you move into coaching or consulting or online courses, you need to be able, you actually have to learn the skill of succinctly explaining to somebody, Hey, I know you have this problem. I'm passionate about helping people with that problem. Here are some of the ways I do that. Here's the service I'm offering to you. You have mm -hmm. to get good at doing that. And so that is this whole new skill set, but you're back in that excited 
place when you get to yeah. learn it, just like in grad school, when you were learning yeah. all new stuff, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. And yes, I was that nerd in grad school that yes. was like, he can't wait to get home and read my textbook. <laughs> and I'm still, honestly, I'm still kind of a continuation, uh, continuing education <laughs> nerd, but, I love it. um, but that was so important. And then I see that in my consultation groups because there's so many ways that therapists can meet other therapists that are not healthy and not supportive. And therapist yeah. Facebook groups are one of those where there's so much shaming and there's so much guilt about people who are looking for other options. And then to show up in a program like yours or mine, where like-minded people are saying like, yes, yes, this is great. I want to encourage yes. you. I'm going to support you. Like yes. that's what we need. We need supportive colleagues. We need supportive people who, you know, want to grow and learn and not just do the same old, same old. Well, and that honestly, that is the exciting part of it because you're right. We've all been in the therapist Facebook groups where people are bitter and they're burned out and they're, you know, just in there to kind of complain and I don't know, be trolls to other <laughs> therapists, right. which is like, why, why? But, I know, I know. <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other, I know. Let's do it. Let's schedule our next week for that. <laughs> when you get around the people who are sort of excited about life again, because they're taking on new challenges. I was saying to a friend of mine recently, I was like, you know, a lot of people my age are sort of on cruise control to retirement. I'm in my mid forties. A lot of people my age are kind of on cruise control to retirement. And I love that I'm in an environment where I'm actually learning new things all the time. And I'm with other therapists who are learning new things all the time. It seriously keeps you young and engaged and vital and creative. And yes. I just love having these new skill sets that to me, I will tell you, like for me, and I know everybody's a little different, but a lot of us, I think are very security motivated. And that was oh, certainly yes. me. So when we crossed state lines and I lost my income, that is the worst feeling for me. Like I hate that lack of security so deeply. So for me, it was always like, okay, how can I be able to create something that no one can ever take away from me? I cannot yes. move one state over and someone has taken away my security. Like that right. was a horrifying feeling. And I know that there's a lot of people who are like that never, that won't happen to me. I cannot tell you how many clients come to us and they're like, I had to go take care of an aging parent. So yes. I had to move. I fell in love with someone in another state. I had to move. I followed an adult child. I had to move. People yes. don't expect it to happen to right. them. But now the truth is because I've developed the skills to take what I know as a therapist, succinctly mm -hmm. package it into a service that I can offer to someone else and do that in exchange for money and put that out on the internet because I've developed those skills. I feel this total lifetime security. Like mm -hmm. if everything fell yeah. apart tomorrow, I know exactly how to rebuild and I could do yes. it again. And so that kind of security that I'm in control of my income, I'm in control of my livelihood, mm -hmm. and I'm using all the things that I learned doing the best career of all time, which yeah. is becoming a therapist is amazing. Yeah. I have, we'd be remiss in not bringing up the fact that therapists love to throw out the word ethics. I'm uh -huh. sure that you have encountered that at times. People are yeah. like, you can't ethically coach. I know there are ways to do it. And I know that that's probably something you teach in your program, how to make sure you're doing the right things. Yep. Let's talk about it. So you absolutely can ethically coach. What therapists need to understand is you are always held to the ethics of your license, no matter what. So you are held to that higher tier standard of your therapy license, even if you're coaching. Now, what we have our clients do is we very specifically write it into their paperwork. You are going to, in your initial consults, we actually have our clients who are the clinic coaches. They get a certification as a clinic coach. And so what we have them do is we have them say, I am going to go over mandated reporting. I'm going to go mm -hmm. over limits to confidentiality. And I'm going to explain to you, coaching client, that because I am a therapist and a coach, I am not your therapist, but I am mm -hmm. holding to the ethics of my therapeutic license. So I want to review those ethics with you as well, even though you are my coaching client. Now, the other thing that's really important to protect yourself and to protect your license and to protect the client who doesn't right. understand the difference is mm -hmm. that you need to separate out your two businesses. Mm -hmm. So we strongly recommend for anyone out there, 
don't just slap a coaching page on your website. It creates confusion in the marketplace. You cannot expect clients to know the difference. You have more responsibility than that. And this is what I'm constantly kind of lecturing people about. You have more responsibility than that. You need to make it clear as a bell and it is up to you and not to the client to understand the differences. It's up to you to explain the differences. Now, beyond that, of course, your coaching should be serving a non-clinical level of need. Your therapy, you can help everybody. You can help clinical and non-clinical levels of need in therapy. In coaching, you should Mm -hmm. be serving a non-clinical level of need. You should be referring to another therapist to a higher level of need if somebody Mm -hmm. needs that, just the same as we would in in our therapy work every day. So you should know that you're still going to follow the same tenets that you do every day as a therapist. You're going to choose usually one specific niche, and it's going to be a non-clinical niche. So you're not going to be like, I'm a therapist for trauma, and I'm a coach for trauma. Right, right. That is where people get into trouble. And that is where therapists are yelling in the groups like, oh, you're just trying to do therapy across state lines. Yeah, there are therapists who do do that. And they're not thinking enough about the potential damage that could be done to them and to the client continuing to work that way. What you want to do is choose a non-clinical level of need. And the way that I explain it to my clients is, let's say in your practice, you're an expert at anxiety and you're treating generalized anxiety and you're treating panic attacks and you're treating Mm -hmm. all of these, you know, intense forms of anxiety. You could take the same skills and you could take the exact same, you know, interventions and things that you give your clients in therapy, but you could come over into a coaching space and say, I am going to treat people who have public speaking nerves and Mm. I'm going to help them overcome their public or first date jitters. And I'm going to help them overcome because this is a non-clinical level of anxiety. This is not debilitating their life. This is saying, I have a very specific situational challenge. I need the tools and the techniques just like any other more highly anxious person does, but I can apply them in this one specific way. This is where we now start to see, oh, I can flow very easily what I do in clinical work over to a non-clinical level as well. Yeah. I so love that explanation because I do have members periodically who will say, I want to start a coaching business and what do I need to do? And I'm my advice is always like, you need to talk to someone who understands this because it is more complex than right. just at face value. So you do need right. to understand what you're doing. But most of the time they want to do anxiety coaching when they're an anxiety therapist. And so yes. explaining that you can find those specific niches where you're yes. still using those same skills that I love the way that you describe that, because that is, that makes so much more sense. And the clients are going to understand the difference. I can't imagine a client who's seen you for anxiety anxiety saying, wow, I see that you're a coach for public speaking and I want to come and do that too. And and they might, and then you have to be prepared to deal with that, I guess. Exactly. Well, and the truth is, you know, once a therapy client, always a therapy client, that exact example, I would just say, oh, great. Well, we can help you with that here in therapy too. You're always my therapy client. And so we do, of course, follow the same dual relationship Mm -hmm. guidelines and everything because it's that standard of ethics for our license. But people worry about it, interestingly, more than it actually comes up because Mm -hmm. when you choose a certain niche for coaching, and you start to put it out on the internet where now the whole world is your potential client list, not Which just so you know, scary yeah. <laughs> at first. <laughs> you're not just looking at that, like five miles around your office. You're now looking yes. at, Oh, I can get clients from anywhere. And so people worry a lot, like, Oh, someone's going to come in. And what if they want to go to therapy instead of coaching? And I'm like, if they can't drive into your office or they don't live in your state, it's a moot point anyway. And the vast yeah. majority of people, it's a moot point. Mm-hmm. That's where people are always so worried about it. And I'm like, I've had it happen maybe once. <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah. Well, we set the bar so high anyway, as therapists, we have these high expectations and we are so afraid. Like you said, it's the lowest pain of people at master's levels, education. Yeah. And on top of that, we are so scared about the ethics that it really immobilizes us at times and creates like people won't even look into things. And then once they double down that they can't do that because they're afraid, then those are the ones who are then criticizing the people who are doing it who are and doing, doing it, it right. successfully. And right. now they feel a little bit jaded about that. So now right. they're going to make you feel bad. That's exactly what happens. And yet the people who are out there doing it, it's amazing. Literally just this morning, before I jumped on with you, I was in our Facebook group answering questions. We have one client who 
out of, no, I shouldn't say out of the blue. She has been steadily building her social following. She's been steadily doing the things that we teach in the program. She has been booking clients in her niche, contacted by a television network who wants to develop a show and have her be the expert on the show. I'm not going to give away more details than that. Sure, it's her yeah, news, it's yeah. not mine, uh-huh. but right. these are the kind of opportunities. We have had clients yeah. invited to speak in Spain, in Ireland, all around this country in the areas of their coaching niche, because when you choose a certain niche, you start to become seen as the go-to expert in that niche. Yeah. Now more and more opportunities can open up for you. And so it's amazing to see people's lives expand in ways they weren't even anticipating. We had another Mm -hmm. client recently who had said, I have now booked my first five coaching clients. And with only five coaching clients, she's making more that Mm -hmm. month than she ever made in a fully booked month as a private practice therapist. So when you think about working a five hour week, versus what you probably typically do, let's say like a 30 hour week for your average Mm -hmm. private practice therapist, you right. think about how much life this gives you back and how right. much more impact you can have and how much more you can maybe be with your family or just do the things that are high value for you in your life. Yeah. It's amazing just to see people's lives expand like that. And mm-hmm. I will say this, and you know this a little bit because you saw my talk in uh, Costa Rica. I'm sort of obsessed with the fact that I feel like it is our job as helping professionals That if we are not constantly growing and expanding our own lives and our own worldview and all the things about us, like not just growing like, oh, I'm reading another self-help book and it's great, but that we're actually challenging ourselves, that we're actually facing the fears and doing it anyway, that we're actually growing into the next level version of ourselves. I truly believe, and people get mad when I say this, I do not believe you're the best therapist you can be if you're not doing that. If you I agree a hundred percent. Yes. Thank you. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> I actually, I just this morning recorded another podcast episode talking about all the ways that we are humans doing this work and that's never getting accounted for. And one of the things was that our world is ever changing and it's gotten really, really hard in the past three or four years. And we need to be challenging ourselves, looking at our values, looking at how the world's changing and what are our values showing up like in in the therapy room or the coaching room so that we can be prepared for those things, but also allow ourselves to say, I can't work with this client who is so opposed to who I am as a person. I'm not going to have to sit like the blank slate in the room with this person and hear them criticize my race or my gender or something like that. And then to continue to learn and to grow. It's easy when you're burnt out to forget how exciting that is. And I know you talk a lot about that as well, that bubble baths are not going to do it when you're burned out. Exactly. <laughs> a bubble bath has never cured my burnout. <laughs> Not that I mind a bubble bath, but <laughs> it's so true. To me, I truly believe that at base, a human being is creativity in a human form. Like that is yeah. truly what I believe that our spirits are just made of creativity and that we get stuck. All of us, it's just a condition of human existence. We get stuck in the ruts of the everyday. We get stuck in the ruts of just what it means to go to work and drive home and pay the bills and go to the dentist and all the things that we all have to do every day. And if we're not consciously seeking places for our creativity to explore itself and for us to grow and expand, then we are shrinking. And as Mm -hmm. we are shrinking and as we're not doing those things and not challenging ourselves, we are not going to be the best therapist for our clients. Because we are truly not in that place where we're saying, hey, I'm talking to you as somebody who has done this work and I'm really excited over here Mm -hmm. on the other side of it. And I'm going to pull you along and get you over here with me because you will see how much better life is over here. That is what I think is truly the most helpful thing to our clients is that they are looking at someone and going, wow, I want to be able to be Mm -hmm. in that emotional, spiritual, excited place that you are. Absolutely. And we have to get there first. We have to do that pioneering work first. Yeah, absolutely. And and so I would imagine that a lot of your coaching clients have discovered that they enjoy their therapy work more now that they have this balance of maybe just learning about the coaching when they're in their learning phases or growing this second business and the energy that infuses into them. And then they find that I actually love therapy again, and I can have a balance of still doing therapy if they choose to, and not being so much worried about 
how much they're getting paid <laughs> and still have right. this other part that can provide the financial freedom for them to have work-life balance and to enjoy their lives. There's a funny thing that happens. And we talk about this actually a lot in our group because after probably, I was probably two years in when I realized this is happening to everybody. And I started trying to think about why. So what happens is people come into my program that's called Six Figure Flagship. That is the one program I run. If you want to work with me, we have different levels of support inside of Six Figure Flagship, but you need to get in there to work with me. So people get into Six Figure Flagship. They start dedicating all this energy to building the coaching business. They're getting excited about it. They're staying up late. They're you know figuring out all these little things that they can do, all the bells and whistles. What inevitably happens, it's so funny, Therapy clients start coming out of the woodwork. Of course. All of a sudden, <laughs> everybody is getting like five calls a day. People they saw 15 years ago are coming back. Like it's yes. craziness. And they come into the group and they're like, I'm overwhelmed. And I'm up to 30 therapy clients. And I have a waiting list of 27 people. And I don't know what to do. And it's <laughs> hilarious. And I was really, truly a couple of years ago sitting there going, why is this happening? Why? And you know what hit me and the way that I explain it to myself, I truly think you step forward in your own life and you say, I'm ready for more. I am ready for the next step. I am demanding more of myself. I'm demanding more of the universe. I am opening myself up to more income and more this and more that. And I feel like the universe is like, okay, so the channel that's <laughs> open right now is your therapy practice. And I'm going to flood <laughs> it with everything yeah. you're asking for with that more, more, more. And I also feel like it's almost cruel test in a way. Like, well, how dedicated are you really right. to <laughs> getting out of your norm? Like, really? Are you sure? Even if I send you 20 more clients, you still yeah. want to do that? So I always feel like it's a funny thing. And I can't, it's hilarious because almost every new client will come in and they'll hit like six weeks in the program and we can almost time it. People will come into the group or they'll send us a DM and <laughs> They'll be like, I have so many therapy clients. Help. What do I do? And we're like, welcome. Welcome. Yes. You're in the exact right place. This is what happens. That's it's funny. Great. And some people literally will end up at that situation being like, I'm going to bring on another clinician. I'm going to open a group practice because yeah. suddenly I have demand. Some of our clients have actually closed their therapy practices because mm -hmm. the coaching business just totally eclipsed what they were yes. doing in therapy. And they're choosing a level of lifestyle freedom. We have one person, she's closing her therapy practice. They bought a boat and she and her husband are going to go live on the boat and oh, sail the world so because she can coach that. from any we're yes. like, how cool is that? Right. Yes. And so there's so many options available for people and there's mm -hmm. so many ways to balance it too. You know, mm -hmm. people that maybe do therapy two days a week and coaching two days a week, there's a million ways to make it yes. work. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think that we sometimes underestimate the energy that we bring into the room with our clients. I was went through a period of time where I was really burnt out. I made some changes, included moving to a different practice a bunch of my clients came with me and they could notice like, they were like, wow, uh -huh. you are so different. You seem like you're doing really well. And then they feel that energy yes. and they're getting good results from therapy. And then word of mouth is blowing up because they're telling everybody this therapist is amazing. Yes. Isn't that funny? Yes, yeah. it's true. Mm -hmm. And we don't think about that energy, but it's so true. Like uh, we can't help it. We're human. All of our daily stressors and all of our life stuff are going to be there in the room with us. Gosh, I remember right. so well when my kids were first diagnosed with special needs and I was seeing clients and I would sit there and I'm sure my energy was just in the absolute gutter because I was mm -hmm. terribly depressed. And I would sit there and literally I'd be hearing like my client talk about, oh, my boyfriend like took two days to text me back. And I'd be like in my head, like, you think you've got problems, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I was in such a rough, rough place. Yes. And we're yes. human, like we can't help it. But of course, as therapists, it's also our responsibility, like you did, to make the mm -hmm. changes that help us come mm -hmm. out of that. Oh, I so relate. One of my children, I'm not even going to give a gender because that'll give it away. One of my children was <laughs> particularly hard to parent in the teen years. And I came in one day right? and I was like, no more teenagers because I'm angry at all of them right now. And it's hard for me to sit in the room with a teenager who's right. being a jerk to their parents. And I'm supposed to be the therapist because I just want to choke them. So <laughs> you're like, I'm going to have transference all over you. It's not going to work. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Oh, so funny. I get it though. It's human. Like that is such a human yep. story that every therapist can nod along to be like, yep, yep. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if you want to get into this in the podcast, but I loved some of the things you talked about in Costa Rica and the asshole brain is something that just really <laughs> stood out to me. 
<laughs> is that something you want to talk a little bit about? Sure, today? sure, sure. Well, in a way, we sort of have been talking about it. It was funny. That was the one slide that like stuck with everybody. One of the things that I talked about, so I think that was in the context of what I like to call grocery money goals. So the reason I use the phrase grocery money goals is that very often, and I did some silly slides in Costa Rica about how... Uh, if you, let's say, do a vision board and you go get your magazines and you cut out your pictures and you create this like amazing vision board of your life, it's fun, right? Like we all, I'll happily go do that right now. It's fun. I love that stuff. And <laughs> we typically tend to build vision boards or dreams or goals for our lives that are so far disconnected from our yes. actual life and so distant from like where we're actually at right now that our brain has no way, there is no breadcrumb trail from here to there. And so we can go look at our board and be like, someday I'm going to mm -hmm. go to all these places and have the perfect partner and have this giant mansion and blah, 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 blah. You know, like we can look at our vision boards and have all these dreams on it. And our brain is like, that's nice, but I'm overwhelmed by that. I have no idea how to get there. So I'm just going to shut down. And then our brain mm -hmm. starts throwing all the fears and all the negativities and all the imposter syndrome and all the, you're not good enough, but all these yes. things at us that shut us right back down. And they leave us stuck and you see it in your life and we see it in our clients' lives. And we all know it's true. It's just such a basic yeah. sort of human condition. Yes. Now, when I think back to starting this business, like I said, we had moved. I couldn't make any money. I didn't have my license in this new state. Plus we were trying to obviously move, get my kids set up with services and school and all the things. And all I wanted to do, I thought, what if I could just make enough that I could pay for groceries, that I could make enough with my little coaching business that I was trying to get off mm -hmm. the ground, not knowing what I was doing, total right. middle-aged, non-techie suburban mom here, like did not know what right. I was doing. <laughs> but I was like, what if I could just make enough that I could make grocery money? And mm -hmm. that worked so well for my brain because if I said to anybody in your audience, all I need you to do this month is figure out how to make an extra thousand dollars, anything you want besides therapy go make an extra grand. You could do it. You could even do it with two grand because if you had all that creativity, you'd be like, well, maybe I could sell my skill online or I know how to make a logo or I know how to walk dogs or I can babysit or I can do this or I can. There's a million different ways. And yes. when you give your brain a creative project that is right sized, you kind of turn mm -hmm. down the asshole knob in your brain <laughs> because you're giving it a project that it's excited yes. about, you know, yes. that it can actually chew on a little bit. Yeah. And so, and like for me, what started as grocery money goals, well, then I started making grocery money. And then I was like, well, my car is on its last legs and it's got expensive repairs. I wonder if I could save up enough to have a down payment on a better car. And then I did that. And then I was mm -hmm. like, those damn student loan bills oh, <laughs> yeah. every month. I wonder mm -hmm. if I could make enough to pay off the student loans. And little by little, it grew until in year three, I had a million dollar business on my hands, which was yeah, a shock wow. to my me completely. But if somebody had come in in the beginning and been like, you need to make a million dollars in year three, <laughs> we would have nothing. You and I would not be talking. I would be just sitting in my little therapy <laughs> office, you know, like none of this would have ever happened. And so to tune down all the imposter syndrome and all the obstacles that our brain, our poor little sweet asshole brain likes to throw in our way mm -hmm. <laughs> to tune those down. We need yeah. to make those goals right size. You need to make the goal be the next breadcrumb on the trail. And yes, you can be gearing towards the giant mansion on the side of a lake somewhere, but we need the breadcrumbs so that we don't overwhelm ourselves. And that is how you grow so much faster than you even think you're going to grow just by making it right size and giving your brain that creative project to work on. Yeah, I love that, that expansiveness, that space to grow. And, you know, and we teach our clients those things. I'm sure in coaching, you teach that. I certainly teach that as a therapist. And we yeah. often don't do the things that we teach exactly. others to do. <laughs> exactly. We are the classic, like, hairdresser with bad hair. You know, right. dentist with bad teeth, like therapists are the class yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And again, I think it comes back to this small brain mindset that we get in grad school that we forget that, okay, we do have a lot of skills. We do have a lot of things we can do. Maybe I just need to find this small little goal that I can work towards and exactly. see where it goes. Yeah. Well, and I always think it's so eye-opening too, because we'll have a lot of clients, I think because therapists are so educated, you forget how educated you are. So yes. we have clients all the time who are like, 
oh, I went out and I got in a group of my ideal clients and I was just reading like the comments in the group or participating in something the group was doing. And they're like, I was saying the most basic stuff that I could possibly teach. And people were blown away by it. Yes. Yes. Blown away. They had never heard that before. It was blowing. It was amazing. It was blowing their minds. And our our clients who are, of course, therapists are like, I thought everybody knew that. And we're like, no, <laughs> right. no, nobody knows that. They need you. You know, we think everybody knows that. Nobody knows that. And yeah. so realize, I think having that lived experience where you're like, I'm no one's expecting me to teach the Harvard level. They only can take in the third grade level. And that's easy. I can do that in yes. my sleep. You know, I can teach that stuff in my sleep. And so realizing that is refreshing thing because right. we realize, oh, if we just even go back to basics, it's so mm-hmm. helpful for people. Yeah, absolutely. And I love your energy. I imagine you're a phenomenal coach. Oh, thank you. You certainly brought a lot of fun energy to Costa Rica. And I love (laughs) what you're doing. You know, I've learned a lot today, which is helpful for me when I have consultation group members that are thinking about coaching, because really, once they get into the consultation group programs, they start seeing therapists doing other things. And then they start getting that creative spark. Yeah, absolutely. So well, then if we want, okay. I don't know, were you about to wrap or were you going to ask another no, question? No, go ahead. You're good. You're good. I was going to say, there is one thing I'm doing that any of your therapists can join in. It's totally free. It's brand new. It started as a little experiment within our client group. I wanted a way to stay more connected on a daily basis to all of our graduates. And so I think by the time this goes live, it will be live for everyone to join. I started sending out little like one to two minute audio messages that I send via text once a day. And they are all along these lines about mindset and motivation and up leveling your life and, you know, psychology and just the therapy and like things that matter to us, things that are important to us. And I started sending them out to our clients as this little like, hey, here's this little thing. It might be the exact right thing that you need to hear today. It might not. Like It could be a totally random topic that doesn't apply to you today, but I'm just going to send them out anyway. And the response was phenomenal. People loved them. Mm -hmm. It was two minutes. They could just listen to it in the car on the way to wherever. And it would just give them that little like aha or that little thing Mm -hmm. to think about or that little journal prompt for the day. So we decided to open it up to everybody. And it's called the growing. Yeah, I'm so excited. (laughs) It's called the Growing Edge Microcast because it's kind of like a little micro podcast that you can just listen to once a day. If everybody wants to, if you go on Instagram to Hey Katie Reed on Instagram, or if you just go to HeyKatieReed.com, and I'll spell my name because I have one of those names that you can spell a million different ways. (laughs) Hey A. T-I-E-R-E-A-D, like read a book. Mm-hmm. So it's heykatyreed.com or heykatyreed on Instagram. You can opt in and we'll send them to you too. And it's just, it's a free thing. It's just once a day. And secondly, if you're interested in the six figure flagship program and mm-hmm. learning about all the different, we have multiple price points. We have multiple levels of support in there. If you apply for that, that is katyreed.com. So just take out the hey, katyreed.com for six-figure flagship okay. application. It says like outgrow your practice and you just click there and apply. And then we'll send you the little webinar that talks about all the different price points and levels of support. And we would love to hear from anybody who's worked with you because I know they'll be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, my members are amazing. I'm sure as, as yours are. <laughs> yeah. I was reading your email earlier today about this new micro podcast and I'm like, Ooh, it looks like tomorrow is the day that we get to sign up. I'm going to be signing up. <laughs> so, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. like ridiculously excited about it. So hopefully other people will enjoy it as much as I have. Yeah. But what a great thing to be able to do something that's just going to take a little bit of time of your day and a little bit of time of their day that could potentially change someone's perspective for the whole day, right? For the whole day. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's kind of cool because our clients were like, oh, I sent that out to some of my clients or I talked about that little concept in therapy today. It's funny. Yes. You know how kismet just works sometimes yes, and absolutely. you hear something and then your client talks about something and you're like, you yeah, know, I just heard this thing this morning <laughs> right. where they were saying, and then some clients are like, it's just my coffee with Katie. And they feel like it's just our little time together. And then some <laughs> are great. like, it's my daily journal prompt. And I love that because I'm a daily journaler too. So I love it that people see it. It's like, oh, I'm going to dive deeper onto my experience of this concept in my daily journal. Yeah. And I feel like it probably feels like people are feeling they have a more intimate connection with you. It's just them in a room listening to your voice. I hope. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. 
Well, Katie, thank you so much for being here today. This has been a lot of fun. And we will absolutely put your contact information, all the things that you just shared in the show notes so that everyone can easily find you. So thank you for listening. There are new episodes of the Colleague Down the Hall podcast released every Thursday on all major platforms. Please remember our work is hard, but it doesn't have to be lonely. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Colleague Down the Hall podcast. For show notes, links, and downloads, head over to colleaguedownthehall.com where you'll be able to learn more about getting the clinical support you need and resources to help you work in a supported, sustainable way. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share with your therapy friends and colleagues. Subscribe to the podcast. And if you love this episode, please leave a review.